What are we going to do as a church? Our souls need to wake up. We need to respond to the gospel of Jesus. He said, go into the world. We don't want to deal with reality, Christian. We don't even want to deal with reality even though we've been saved from this place. I'm calling on you today in the name of Jesus to rise up to the call of God. Christ is coming back soon. If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you going to scare them off to? Hell number two? People stop and think about it. If hell really exists, and it does, I didn't say that Jesus did. Then don't you think people need to know about it? Can't you at least give them a fighting chance? Are you just going to sit there and let them burn? This is Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. Welcome to our show. Right now, I have a few things to run down to you and to encourage you that the Bible is being fulfilled in our lifetime. Things have been happening, but guess what? The significance of what's going on right now with Israel is what you need to wake up to if you have no idea. If you haven't been studying your Bible and you don't know the significance of Jewish people and the nation of Israel and their place in history and beyond, then you might be lost in what I'm trying to tell you here. But well, I'll try to give you the cold notes version and I'll read from a few articles. And then I'm going to show you something that's very significant right now dealing with our president, President Trump and the Jewish nation and what they say, what they think God is doing through him. And since he's been inaugurated as president, there's been a, a mindset of saying, hey, Trump is like a Cyrus. And I'll give you the information on that in a few minutes. So to begin, so Jesus prophesied to his disciples in Matthew, Mark, Luke about the Jewish temple, not just the Jewish temple, but Jerusalem being destroyed. And it happened through the Romans. Now, that's a significant part that you need to know about what happened to Israel why it was so barren for so long until 1948 when israel became a nation 1948 then you had a six-day war and all sorts of things that went on i'm trying to keep this as short as possible and and i really encourage you to do your research in the bible first and then you know look around for some articles on what's been going on for decades now with the jewish people and how God has, has fulfilled Bible prophecy through that nation. And, you know, you have your naysayers and you have your haters, but God said not to be an enemy of Israel, basically, um, in, in the sense that, that not that they're perfect or that they, are, uh, they don't have to uh, go through the same process of salvation that we do they have to accept jesus christ and if there are some out there that have accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior but for the most part israel still has uh, the blinders on so to speak so they will finally see it when the antichrist they'll finally wake up when the antichrist goes up into the new third temple and declares himself as god and the evidence of this we can find i'm going to read um from you know christandprophecy.org so you know i'll just put it in a certain manner so that i won't confuse anyone so it basically says here that the bible clearly teaches that a new temple which will be called the third temple will be built in the future the first temple was the one that Solomon built and which was destroyed in 586 B.C. The second temple, 516 B.C. to 70 A.D., was built after the Jews returned from Babylonian captivity. The platform on which it sat was greatly expanded and beautified by King Herod, as was the temple itself. But since the sacrifices were never stopped during the renovation, and expansion of the new temple was still considered to be the second temple. The third temple will exist during the Great Tribulation. Daniel refers to this temple when he says that the prince who is come, meaning the Antichrist, will enter it and stop the sacrifices in the middle of the Tribulation. Daniel 9, 
27. The Apostle Paul mentions it when he declares that the man of lawlessness will profane the temple by entering it and declaring himself to be God, as in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-4. The third temple is also mentioned in the book of Revelation when John is told to measure it, a symbolic way of telling him to assess its spiritual condition. That's Revelation 11, 1 through 2. This raises the question as to precisely when the temple will be rebuilt. The Bible does not reveal the answer to this question. All it says for certain is that the temple will be in existence when the Antichrist reveals himself. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-4. Again, and that will be in the middle of the tribulation, Daniel 9, 27. Since this is since this will be only three and a half years into the tribulation, many have concluded that the temple will likely be rebuilt before the tribulation begins. Because how could such a magnificent building be constructed in such a short period of time? Well, the article goes on, but I'll tell you what the rabbi said in his presentation just uh, this week. He said that, and the name of the rabbi is Rabbi Chaim Richman in his um, video, The Dedication of the Third Temple. This is, You can find this on Temple Institute YouTube channel. And he basically said it could be built within a year. <laughs> within a year. Not meaning a year from this broadcast, which is done here. December 5th, 2018. It basically means of the time they get the go to basically rebuild it that it will be finished within a year's time. So, as we can see, this is not something that's, you know, another 30 years off because the rabbi said they have been planning this for 30 years. 30 years. So this is not going to be something that's 50 years away, 100 years away. They are pushing this heavy, and they have commercials in Israel right now circulating um, about it's time, it's time to rebuild, it's time to rebuild, it's time to rebuild. And uh, as far as the Jewish wedding is concerned, the crushing of the glass in the Jewish wedding re represents the um, destruction of the second temple, if you did not know that. And these are just little things. And let me just read from this other article really quick from CBN. All right. So on this CBN News article, it says these are the four biblical prophecies playing out in Israel right now. I'll put a link below so you can finish the article. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says here, when President Trump moved to the U.S. Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, many people of faith quickly recognized the biblical significance of such a move. Trump, like King Cyrus before him, fulfilled biblical prophecy by recognizing that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish state and that the Jewish people deserve a righteous free and sovereign Israel. However, this was not the first time in the modern state of Israel's short 70 years that it has played a role in the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Many of the miracles we are witnessing in Israel today were promised in the Bible long ago. As far as you know, they're going to be gathered from the four corners of the world, the spiritual partnership between Jews and Christians, the revitalization of the Jewish language, and, and on and on, right? There's many things going on right now in our time as we sleep and eat and go to work and come home and play and whatever. These prophecies are being fulfilled in our time. Now, um, there's something else significant going on right now, and that is... As of two days ago, it's been declared that it's seven days until the dedication of the third temple. Um, as far as the altar is concerned, there's an altar that they um, made, they're making to bring on the dedication of the third temple. And it says here from WND that the reestablished Jewish Sanhedrin is pushing the envelope on the rebuilding of the temple next Monday, the last evening of Hanukkah by cons consecrating a stone altar and reading off a declaration to all nations intended as an invitation to participate in receiving its blessing, leading an effort to replace the United Nations with a new God-centered organization. Th this is important to, to really grasp because there is going to be a one world religion. As you see here, the United Nations is pushing the one world religion aspect along with the Catholic Church. 
And it seems now that, you know, the, the Jewish people are getting involved with this and Muslim leaders, high up, respected people in that um, field. And also, you know, Putin, <laughs> the Pope, and, you know, you can, you can do the research and you'll see everyone that's trying to get involved in this thing. But as you see here, and the rabbi that I spoke of a minute ago, he declared in his speech, the dedication of the Third Temple, that yes, they're trying to make it um, a place of, you know, that where everyone can come and, and worship God. But realize this, that the, that Islam does not worship the same God. And many people, even some smart people like Judge, what's their name, said that they do, but they don't. But we're, remember, this is, a, this is the process of, oh, all road leads to heaven, and, um, you know, God manifested itself in many ways, but that's counter to the way that God operates and is counter to his characteristic, right? He's not a God of confusion. And I'll just leave it right there. But the, the real reason I'm showing, I'm telling you all of this now is because I had, I got my hands on the temple coins, you, you know, you'll see it in HD and on the front there's Trump's head on the first coin next to King Cyrus. And that, that, that that's that's a significant thing because the significance is, like I said before, that the Jewish people see Trump as a King Cyrus or he's like a King Cyrus. OK, so. Right. So on the front, you'll see it mentioned in Cyrus, the Belfort Declaration, Trump Declaration. Um, from 1917 to 2017, and it says temple coin on it, and on the back it has the temple. So this is all about the temple. And on the flip side, it has, guess what, the temple, right? And then now a new one came out that's gold-plated, pretty heavy. And the gold-plated one here is what Pastor Billy brought back from Israel. So we had a chance to touch and look at him up close. And this is historical, obviously. So take it in and just know that Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. But let me explain a little bit. It has to fulfill 70 years, which Israel is now 70 years in its, its existence in modern time. It has the menorah and it has the U.S. seal and another seal. And then at the bottom it says, and he charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem. And then on the back, it says the temple coin it has a dove coming down and it's quoting um, like doves to their nest, Isaiah 60, verse 8. So if you don't know, and I'm giving you a little bit, you need to research this, find out what's going on in your Bible, go to scriptures and see what the Lord has said and has declared and what's really going on in your lifetime, in my lifetime. I heard about this stuff maybe 12, 13 years ago, something like that, something around there. And like the, the rabbi said, they've been planning this for 30 years. They have the red heifer. He talked about that in the video. I'll put the link down below. And um, everything is ready. The golden menorah, the Sanhedrin, which wasn't ex in existence for a while, you know, um, the, the, the line of David, the, 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 the DNA test, all sorts of stuff going on. Just go to templeinstitute.org and you'll find out the truth. Um, and this signifies so much. Like, like the Bible says, the Antichrist will go up in there and he will declare himself as God. That's when their eyes are open. That's when the blinders come off. So what, no matter what your position you have on the rapture, <laughs> this is significant. And... Um, if this is this close, then the rapture of the church is close. And um, even though it's imminent, you'll get the picture. So um, I just want to encourage you again. I want to, uh, you know, tell you that if you're saved, this is a time to rejoice because your redemption is near. And you need to get out and preach the gospel um, to your friends, your family, whoever you're next to. You don't even, even if it gets a little odd to talk about your Savior, talk about it. This is what it's all about. 
spreading the gospel. These things are happening in our lifetime. What are you going to do about the people that you love? Um, you can't save them. Only the Holy Spirit can. So just do do what you have to do and, and tell us, pre- preach the gospel. Tell them the truth. It can't hurt you. Even if they get mad, at least you gave them a fighting chance. That's why we have this channel. Don't let them burn. Don't just sit there and say, oh, wait till tomorrow or next week or, you know, 50 years from now or whatever. <laughs> Whatever's rolling around in your head. This is some serious business going on in Israel. And Israel is the time clock, the prophetic time clock. And everything is heating up in the Middle East. And so whatever you think about Trump, that's your business. But God is using him to bring forth Bible prophecy. And I stand on that. And um, also, if you're not saved, these are things you need to look into. This was prophesied thousands of years ago. So it's time to wake up. It's time to get spiritually rejuvenated by Jesus Christ. His blood was shed for you. And you have to put your trust in that, in him. Your belief, you might think, yeah, I believe in God. Yeah, I believe some of the stuff in the Bible. I believe some of the stuff about Jesus. That doesn't save you. You have to put your trust in that. Jesus Christ died and bled and rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. That's what you put your trust in. So thank you for listening. Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. If you want to buy one of our t-shirts or um, give us a gift through Patreon or PayPal or one of those, please. If you um, like with this content, please share the links, subscribe, get your friends to subscribe. We have more content coming for you, uh, a lot of surprises, and we're back on the ball. Amen. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.